we're going to consider yet another simply supported beam that's the final load case we're going to consider in this recap so we have our simply supported beam again pin on the left hand side roller on the right could be the other way around makes no difference and this time is everyone's favorite loading condition and sarcasm intended is now we're going to apply a moment m right in the center of the beam so let's dimension that up and that there is alapon 2 that is alapon 2 so in the previous examples didn't mention it as we went along but in all the previous examples I drew my bending moment diagram underneath. Some might consider that to be upside down, but what we've done here is drawn our bending moment diagrams on the tension side. Again, with the point load on the beam, we drew our bending moment diagram on the tension side. And this becomes useful in this kind of problem which many students, myself included at the time, can find pretty confusing. So we're going to have a look into this. We, if we do some of the forces in the y direction, let's quickly draw the free body diagram. So we have an unknown reaction force RAY at the right hand side. An unknown reaction force R B Y at the right hand side, and this moment in the middle. So, some of the forces in the y direction, and you're going to get from the sum of the forces in the y direction, you get R A Y plus R B O Y equals zero. Or you could rearrange it if you like, but RAY must be equal to minus RBY. That's saying that one of the reactions will point up and one of the reactions will point down. So one of the tools we can use in terms of determining which one is pointing up, which one is pointing down, is we can look at one of the ends only. And if this moment in the center is trying to rotate the beam around anti-clockwise, the only way that this beam will, will not be rotating is if RBY points downwards. And then using our some of the forces in the Y direction, RAY must therefore point upwards or you can do the same idea again and take a look from B with this moment trying to rotate the beam anti-clockwise. R A Y multiplied by the lever arm of L must try and rotate the beam clockwise. So we now know just qualitatively, just on inspection, what direction the reactions must go in. And this idea we're going to use over and over again as we move further on in qualitative analyses. Now we're going to write down the bending moments for this beam. And we'll see where using the bending moment on the tension side becomes very handy. So I have a portion of beam and I've made a cut. And I have the reaction R A Y. I have no idea about the magnitude of R A Y at this moment. And then I have the moment M of X where I've made the cut. And so that I can write my bending moment equation and quickly dimension the length x so taking moments about that point x 
I have the positive moment and clockwise moment MX must be equal to RAY multiplied by X. And what this is showing us is we have a linear function of X. So I could calculate the magnitude of the reaction R A Y, but I'm not going to because I want to show how I'm going to use the deflected shape to help me determine what my bending moment diagram must look like. So I have my beam and on there I'm going to add and draw the free body diagram. I now know the directions of the reactions and I have the moment at the center. Now as a result of this we're going to try to draw what the deformed shape is so as a result of this loading this is pushing this load is pushing upwards and that means that the beam is going into tension on this side beam is trying to go into tension on this side and that's the only information I know apart from symmetry and that at this center it is trying to rotate from a horizontal direction it's trying to rotate anti-clockwise and I'm going to put those bits of information together and now that's my quick sketch of the deflected shape. And I'm going to use this information in this case to help me draw the bending moment diagram. Drop a dotted line down. And what we noticed is our bending moment equation was a linear function in x the distance the other thing we've also said about bending moment diagrams is we're going to draw them positive on the tension side or on the tension side of the beam so moving from the left hand side of the beam we are under tension underneath the beam and we do the same on the right hand side we are under tension on the top half of the beam and in between these two values we have a jump where the value of that jump is equal to the applied moment in the system and that jumps upwards because we have a positive moment being applied so it goes from zero zero and goes through zero in the center and this value would have to be so whatever one of the reactions are multiplied by l upon two 